Hey everyone, it's Melinda with Tailored and Teal and welcome back to another video. This is actually a continuation from a video I filmed a few weeks ago. I received this Dooney and Burke purse in a thread up rescue box, but unfortunately it was covered in this orange substance. I'm assuming it's marker. I just don't know if it's permanent, but either way, I was unsuccessful in my attempt to remove it with hairspray. I actually started to take off the paint and the finish of the purse, so I knew that I needed to do something different. I am on a group on Facebook that is run by Annette, and she goes by Excess Baggage on both Instagram and also Facebook. But this Facebook group is great for anyone who is selling purses, rehabbing purses, just needs purse advice, etc. I posted a picture of this purse on the Facebook Facebook page asking for advice because removing it with hairspray wasn't doing the job. I had asked about dyeing the purse and she actually suggested that I paint it, which I honestly did not even know that that was an option. She said acrylic paint for leather is actually going to be my best option to cover this up. And also since I've kind of rubbed off some of the finish, it'll cover that up. So I did do half of the purse already because I wanted to get a good handle on this before I showed you all how to do it. So I'm gonna flip it over and show you the front. So here is the front. I do have to do one more top coat because it didn't really go on completely smooth, but um, I am very, very, very happy with how it has turned out. And then let's bring it back over here. Yeah, quite a difference. I am gonna give you a little bit of information about how I picked the paint for this. So all I did was go onto Google and I typed in acrylic paint for leather and the brand Angelus came up. Now I do have Angelus products now that I use for cleaning leather and suede and things like that. I honestly didn't even know that they had paint. So this particular product is a professional leather preparer and deglazer. So this is going to help clean the surface, also get rid of any finish that is on the purse that the manufacturing had put on in the first place. And using this will help make the paint stick better. Um, I also got these cleaning pads that kind of go with the deglazer and prepare. I don't know exactly what these are made out of, but they're very sturdy and very helpful when doing this. And then on to the colors. So on the Angelus website, they give you an idea of what the color could look like, but I will tell you right now, it's not accurate at all. <laughs> so I ended up going with three different options because I really wasn't sure which one was going to match with the purse. I will put up what they kind of look like on the website while I'm talking so that you can understand why I wasn't really sure what color I should be getting. So I opted for putty bone and natural and here is what they look like out of the bottle so this is bone which is honestly like a green to me this is putty which is kind of a dark gray brownish color and then here is the natural and then this is actually the natural just not as thick as the other one so if you compare this with the purse Clearly this one is the winner. <laughs> At first I thought that this was going to be too dark for the purse, but as you can see, it actually turned out pretty well, even lighter than expected. So we are going to be using the natural color. And then the other thing that I got from Angelus was this four coat. This is basically just a top coat to kind of seal in everything that you did, but it is also scratch resistant. It says mildly scratch resistant on the website. And I opted for a matte finish because this purse doesn't really have like a shiny, shiny finish. You'll see when I paint it on, it does kind of give like a shiny appearance. So that's why I went with the matte version, but they do have other types of coats like shiny, uh, glossy, depending on what kind of leather or surface that you're working on. I also have some paint brushes here. These are my own paint brushes. We have a wide one that can cover a lot of the purse. I have a flat one that is gonna help me get into the edges. And this small one is to touch up anything and or use it in the crevices if the other one doesn't work. So let's get started. So first up to prepare the leather, I'm going to take the leather preparer and deglazer and one of my little cotton rounds and just rub it all over. I do want to warn you that this is very strong smelling, maybe even worse than nail polish. That's how strong it is. So make sure you're using this in a well ventilated area. 
and here we go. Now you might see some of the color come off. See how there's some of it on the side there. That is okay because we're gonna be painting it. So it's not really gonna matter. Oh gosh, it is so smelly. If I haven't already linked the first video up above and also in the description, I will link it now so you can see kind of what steps I took to attempt to take off the marker. And if you had watched that video, you know how much hairspray I put on this. So this step was very important for me to do. I'm actually gonna do it again. And then we'll do the bottom. And give it one more go around the edges here. All right, I'm gonna let this sit, make sure it's dry before we start to paint. All right, so now the bag is completely dry. I did stuff it with a couple of t-shirts to kind of just make it easier for me to paint. I did not do that when I painted the front. So I think this will help a lot having it stuffed. So the first brush I'm going to use is a small one so I can kind of get in the crevices around the leather here and then up here as well. Now on the front, I did tape all of the leather, but it didn't 100% work and I had to use vinegar to remove some paint from the leather up here on the piping. So I'm not going to use tape this time. Didn't really stay on there well. It didn't do what I needed it to do. So I'm just going to be very careful with this. Make sure to wipe off any paint that gets on here. I have some paper towels over here just in case and let's get started. So I did not shake it. So let me do that now. And the cool thing about Angela's paint is there's actually a little brush inside. I'm not going to use it, but I thought that that was a nice touch. So the reason why I'm going up and underneath the leather, because there's orange stuff all inside. It's almost like a kid got a marker and they just wanted to trace everything. That's exactly what it looks like to me. See what I mean? There's like orange in, in there. How? It's crazy. Um, I did get some paint on the leather already. Of course, this isn't starting off too well. Um, you can just use vinegar and a Q-tip to kind of scrub that off. And I'll show you how to do that when I'm completely finished. Um, Cause I'm sure that it'll happen more than once.
Okay, so I got all of the edges around the leather trim. As you can see, it is a different color, but once we put a couple coats on, you won't be able to tell a difference. So now I'm going to use my larger brush and just do big strokes all over until everything is covered. And then I will do the bottom as well. Now, because this is pebbled leather, I'm kind of using two different strokes of the brush. I'm using an up and down, but I'm also doing kind of sideways because it's not getting on all of the grooves if I'm going in one direction. So just a little tip for pebbled leather. Okay, we have half painted on to the other half. Yes, I am painting over the stitching because honestly, it's just kind of hard to avoid it altogether. There is the other half done. Now we just have to flip it over and do the bottom. All right, so now the entire back and the entire bottom is painted. Angelus recommends at least 15 to 30 minutes for the first coat to dry before putting on the second coat. I like to wait probably a little bit longer, like an hour, just to make sure that it's completely dry. And then we'll do the same thing over again. Second coat though, we don't have to be too finicky because it's kind of already looking pretty good as it is, I must say very very happy with this paint so before this completely dries i do want to show you how i remove the paint that i got on the leather trim by accident i'm just taking a little bit of white distilled vinegar i have some q-tips you're just gonna dip it in there and then see how there's a little bit here on this edge Let's see if i can lift it up a little bit more you're just gonna oh look there's more down here so you're just gonna take your q-tip Basically just scrub it until it's gone. And 
I got some up here. If you're going to do this to one of your own purses or, you know, one that you're reselling, if you are going to use vinegar, I would definitely test it on a small and inconspicuous area. So if for some reason there is a finish on the leather, you know, it doesn't take it completely off. I just spilt my vinegar. Gross. Um, <laughs> so there was one more spot over here. Oh, that's glue, actually. This is glue here, but this is paint right here. And see, it's coming off pretty easily. Okay, it's not perfect. It's still there a little bit, but it's a lot better than it was. Okay, so it's been about 15 to 20 minutes. Even though it's still slightly tacky, I am going to put on a second coat. And as you can see, most of the orange spots have gone away. There's one little tiny speck right there that I might have missed from not brushing in that area, but I will make sure to get it this time. I'm just going to use my wide brush because I've already done the edges pretty well. So I'll just be using this to make one last final coat. And here we go. All right, second coat is on. And there's the bottom. So I'm gonna let this sit for a good 24 hours, maybe even longer. And then after everything dries, I'll be applying the four coat to seal everything in. So I'll see you in 24 plus hours. All right, well, it has actually been about a day and a half. When I checked it last night, about 24 hours after I did the first two coats, it was kind of still sticky. So now a day and a half later, it is good to go. This is what it looks like without the four coat matte finish. And that's what it looks like with it. So you can see it's a lot shinier over here. And I do need to add a second coat onto this side as well. So here is the four coat matte version. 
You always want to shake everything just in case. It does say though, if there are air bubbles at the top to just wait until they surface. So let's see what's inside. Ooh, it is a little crusty on top. Okay, there are some air bubbles, but it's not too bad. And it looks like I knocked all of them out, so that's good. I'm just gonna be using my big brush. This does dry clear. They do recommend to do one to two thin coats, so we're gonna start on the bottom. It looks like it's gonna be lighter, but it's not. It does dry clear. And remember, this coat is basically just protection to kind of seal everything in and also to help prevent scuffs and scrapes. Okay, bottom is done. So now we're gonna work on the back. Again, just be really careful when getting next to any kind of trim. You don't wanna get this stuff on it, although it does dry clear, so it wouldn't be the end of the world if you did, but I try to avoid it. One half is done. Now we're gonna move on to the second side. All right, first coat is done. I will let this dry completely and then apply a second coat. I won't be filming the second coat because you've already basically seen what I do, just paint it on. And then I will show you the finished product once everything is dry and it's ready to list and ready to be sold. Okay, two coats have been added to each side and this is the finished product. There are still some places that I need to get off some paint, like in here, up here underneath the leather trim. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to remove them all just because it's a really hard spot to get into, um, but you can see all of those orange marker marks are all gone, completely covered over. And I'm really happy with my first paint job of my first leather purse. And honestly, I will probably continue to do this if I ever get a purse that needs to be rehabbed again. This purse will be listed by the time that this video goes out. I don't plan on getting this authenticated because this purse doesn't really sell for that much anyway, but based off of research I've done and also just the quality of the materials, I do believe that this is authentic. I was at first a little concerned about this like crookedly placed Dooney and Burke the logo here but i was looking at other purses and they're not always center so i don't really think that that's an indication that it's not authentic but either way it is a really nice quality made purse and someone is going to love it if you're interested in seeing the finished product like when i'm taking photographs for the listing i will put the poshmark listing down below so that you can check it out i appreciate you watching this video let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions um, again, this is my first time doing it, so I may not have the answer for you, but I will try to find it the best that I can. Again, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!